Determining whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar comes down to one thing, bond dipoles. In nonpolar molecules, the bond dipoles cancel out, while in polar molecules, the bond dipoles do not cancel out. We do have a video on bond dipoles, so if you need a refresher on them, then make sure to check that out. So now let's look at some examples. We'll start by looking at a couple examples for nonpolar molecules. In our first example, we will look at CO2. When determining whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar, we have to look at the Lewis structure for that molecule. So I'll put the Lewis structure for CO2 here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in the bond dipoles. And remember, when we do this, we're going to draw an arrow in the direction that the electrons are being pulled. So I'm going to draw an arrow pointing from carbon to oxygen, and I'm going to do this on both sides. This is because oxygen has a higher electronegativity than carbon, so the electrons here are being shared unequally. Each bond between carbon and oxygen is polar. However, this molecule overall is nonpolar, and this is because the bond dipoles cancel out. I can see one arrow pulling to the right and another arrow pulling to the left. I have arrows pointed in equal and opposite directions, and this means that they cancel out. So because these bond dipoles cancel out, this molecule is nonpolar. In our next example, we will look at the molecule CCl4. Chlorine has a higher electronegativity than carbon, so I'm going to draw my arrows in the direction of chlorine. This means the electrons are being pulled closer towards chlorine. And again, I can see in this molecule that I have arrows pointed equal and opposite directions. All of these arrows cancel out, thus making the molecule nonpolar. Another way that I think about this is if you have a box in the middle. If you were to pull on a box in all four of those directions, that box would not move. And if the box is not moving, then that means all of the arrows are canceling out, and that makes the molecule nonpolar. Now let's look at some examples of polar molecules. And remember, polar molecules are polar because the bond dipoles do not cancel out. So in our first example, we will look at the molecule SCl2. Here's a Lewis structure for SCl2, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my arrows pointed towards chlorine because chlorine has a higher electronegativity than sulfur. Now what we see here is that these arrows do not cancel out. I have one arrow being pulled down to the right while another arrow is being pulled down to the left. But I do not have anything pulling up to cancel out these dipoles, which makes this molecule polar. And what you can notice here is that we have two lone pairs of electrons on sulfur that are pushing the chlorines down. So one thing you can make note of is if you have a lone pair of electrons in a molecule, there's a really good chance that that molecule is polar. And in our second example, we're going to look at water. And we're going to see that similar thing happen in water as well. I have two lone pairs on the oxygen, which are pushing the hydrogens down. I'll draw in my bond dipole arrows, and they're going to be pointed towards oxygen because oxygen has a higher electronegativity. And again, these arrows are not canceling out, so this molecule would be polar. Remember, you can think about this as a box in the middle. If I have a box in the middle where sulfur and oxygen are in each of these molecules, and I were to pull down into the left and down to the right, that box is going to move, and that box is going to move down. Because this box is moving, that's another way you can think of these molecules being polar. So molecule polarity goes back to drawing the correct Lewis structure, and then determining whether or not the bond dipoles cancel out. And this is a very important concept in chemistry, as it then helps us better understand various physical and chemical properties that our molecules possess. If you found this video helpful, here are a couple more videos you should check out that will help make science simple.